Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to look at a couple more knockout features that are super useful but which we don't actually need to use in our example application. The end of the course is rapidly approaching and if I don't mention them at least you might miss their existence altogether and that would be a shame. The first thing that I want to mention is knockout support for virtual elements. Some of the bindings are required to be added to a container element such as the if binding that we looked at earlier in the course. If we want to add the binding, but don't have a container that we can use, we can instead make use of a virtual element to apply the binding to. In our example application, if the title text or description is not present, the H1 and P elements will not be in the DOM at all. However, the empty header element will still be there. So to change things so that the header itself is not rendered, we can wrap it in a virtual element. So like I say, we don't actually need to do this, but we can update our application to use a virtual element just so that you can see how they work. Virtual elements use HTML's comment syntax, so the virtual elements will be ignored by the browser, but Knockout will parse them and make use of them. The syntax is extremely simple. So in the HTML, we add a Knockout comment around the header element. And it's a special Knockout comment. And we'll add one after the header as well, and this will be a closing virtual element. So this is just the generic virtual element. It has a start and end tag, as you can see. So to actually add the binding, we just change the opening part of the element to include the binding. And the binding that we want to include is this binding here, which is currently on the header. So we'll just move that so that it's in the opening virtual element instead. We don't need the, we don't need the binding. We can just do that. So now let's view the page in a browser again. And you can see if we inspect things that everything's working as it was before. But now if we comment out, say the, the title and date or the description or something, if we get rid of one of those. Uh, let's have a look. So in the handle details, if we just don't set the description, for example, then the header element itself won't be displayed. So if there is some styling attached to the header as well, then the page won't look weird with like an empty header. So that is how virtual elements work. As you can see, they can be very useful. Another very useful utility I want to talk about is the mapping plugin. This gives us the ability to convert a regular JavaScript object into a view model, where all properties are converted into observables and any arrays are converted into observable arrays. The methods we have to achieve this are the ko.mapping.fromjs and ko.mapping.fromjson methods. It also provides the ko.mapping.toJS and ko.mapping.toJson for unmapping. The mapping plugin is a separate download and is available from the Knockout website. Where we can control the data being returned and are receiving only what we want to use in an easy to consume format, the mapping plugin can save us time and effort. The plugin is also highly configurable and gives us a high degree of control in how the view model is created and which properties from the base objects are used. In this example, there are a large number of properties in the objects returned by Flickr that we don't actually want or need. While it would be possible to include the properties we're interested in and exclude the ones we aren't, it's probably simpler to manually create the objects we want as we have done so far. But like I say, when we can control the objects being returned containing the data and require a one-to-one -one mapping between this and the view model, the mapping plugin can save us a lot of time and effort. We've looked at some of the bindings provided by Knockout throughout the course, but there are also a whole bunch of other bindings that we haven't used in this project. Some of these are simple bindings like the HTML binding, which is similar to the text binding that we used, except that it inserts HTML instead of text. Useful bindings related to CSS, which we didn't look at at all, include the CSS binding, which adds or removes CSS classes according to a property of our view model, and the style binding, which we can use to manipulate the style attribute of an element directly. This binding is like a specialized version of the attribute binding that we did make use of, and is used in a very similar way, with style properties and corresponding view model properties enclosed within curly braces. 
We made use of the click, event and value bindings in our example project, but in addition to these there are also a range of other form related bindings, like the checked binding for example, which links the check state of checkboxes or radio buttons to our view model, or the has focus binding, which is true or false depending on whether the element it is bound to has focus or not. There is also tons of additional documentation and demos on the Knockout site, so I'd strongly recommend you take some time to look through the site and see what else is offered by the Rich framework. So in this lesson we looked at a couple of features from the framework that we didn't get to use but which can be quite useful. We also added a virtual element around the header to stop this element being rendered with nothing in it if some of the information is missing. We also discussed some of Knockout's additional bindings that we didn't use in our example application. In the next lesson, we'll add one last feature to our app, just to round off the practical side of the course. Thanks for watching.